I think all believers would agree that relationship and community is important. And the same goes for the interior of Alaska. However, the difference is in the interior of Alaska, finding and cultivating and maintaining that relationship is uniquely difficult, if not extremely difficult. Communities, small as they are, are separated by huge, vast swaths of wilderness. And it's, it's more appropriate almost to view villages as islands. You can't get to them except by flying most, most of the time. And so you have this need to get together, um, but lots of logistical hurdles to see it happen. So when a gathering can happen in this context, in the interior of Alaska, it's kind of more appreciated, more needed, more sought after. Um, it's rarer here. And um, so for that reason, we kind of think it's worth the cost. It's a neat opportunity for someone to come up and spend time at one of the gatherings here because you get to see how the excitement's contagious. You get to see what it does to people to be able to have that extended retreat time together and connect. And kind of, you just get to know people, their stories, and see where where they're coming from in a way that's it's different when you're sitting having coffee with someone compared to just getting the prayer update. One of the greatest benefits of these gatherings is building building a bigger Christian family here in Alaska. So a gathering would be multiple days of um, food, fellowship, fun, interaction, and whether that's uh, just enrichment or teaching. Our goal is to be able to bring together believers from the interior of Alaska. There's these isolated pockets of, um, of believers. There may be a church that they're a part of. There may just be some isolated believers out there, and it's really hard to be all on your own. For those isolated bush communities, um, we're just very, very isolated. I can't just hop in the car and a fellowship with someone else um, after 20 minutes. No, I mean, McGrath is one of the closest villages. Uh, it takes me an hour to fly here and costs me several hundred dollars. It, it is really good to meet other brothers and sisters in Christ and encourage each other and, and challenge each other. Building that community so that people can go back to their communities um, encouraged, enriched, and ready to carry on the battle alone where they are. One Wilderness is about bringing together the Church of the Interior of Alaska to build intimate relationships with the goal of mutual edification and encouragement. And so far, we've been able to do it. But it's been a complicated endeavor with a high price tag. Many Christ-loving, church-loving organizations have bent over backwards to use their resources, planes, pilots, and mechanics to make gathering believers from villages separated by hundreds of miles of impassable wilderness possible. And now, with the fruit of these events evident, we want to keep gathering, and we want to do it more frequently. With there being more brothers and sisters than our small church can host at once, we've set a lofty but attainable goal. We're asking God to provide the funds for us to host six gatherings a year, as well as visit our neighboring village families in their homes. To accomplish this, we're trying to raise $60,000. The majority of that money, about 75%, will go towards transportation costs. Each gathering will make use of around five aircraft from at least three different ministry organizations, sometimes more. The rest will cover hospitality expenses, food, utilities, study resources, and occasionally guest speakers. 100% of funds received will go towards gathering and inner village travel expenses. Now this is where I ask you to consider helping us achieve this goal. You can pray for us, talk about us, and even come join us. 
but would you also please consider generously making a one-time or recurring financial gift to One Wilderness Ministries. Visit our webpage, onewilderness.org, for more information or to contact us.